Good morning, Hope community. Welcome to another Daily Hope. Today we are in Matthew chapter 24. But before we get into Matthew chapter 24, I actually want to read the last section of Matthew 23. So if you guys remember, in Matthew 23, we talked about, you know, the Pharisees, Sadducees sitting at Moses' seat. Um, you know, they buying heavy burdens. They're, they're, they're putting, they're, they're, they put religion on people instead of relationship. Remember, they were the ones that were supposed to connect people with God through relationship. But instead, they tied people, they bound people to a religion. And so that's a couple of things that we talked about um, yesterday. And But at the end of yesterday's chapter, I want to jump right to um, verse 37. 37? 37. Jesus is, 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 this section right here, it's called Jesus laments over Jerusalem. And he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. Re remember, um, this is so good. Remember a couple of chapters ago when Jesus enters Jerusalem on a, on, on a, on a, on a donkey and there's like the palm branches. People are putting clothes in the road so that they're welcoming Jesus as king. And remember, Jesus goes straight to the heart of Jerusalem. He goes into the temple, right? And how that prophecy that Matthew uses refers to Jerusalem as, um, as a daughter of Zion, right? Here, Jesus does the same thing. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. Who is her? The daughter of Zion, right? This is Jerusalem. So Jesus looks at Jerusalem and sees them as a whole, as a person. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Jesus is saying, I, I, I wanted you... I, I, I wanted you, I wanted to save you, heal you, bring you together. Be that mother hen that protects you. And you guys rejected me. Um, I just wanted to say that because that, that's, this is, um, this one, this is Jesus showing emotion, but two, it's going to set up what happens um, in chapter 24. Okay, so before we get into chapter 24, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you will speak to us today through your Holy Spirit. Ooh, I'm sorry, <laughs> through your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Wow, it is a warm day today, isn't it? All right, let's begin. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to show him the buildings of the temple. So when Jesus went out, departed from the temple, then his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all things? Or sure, what is it? Well, first of all, like, what do you mean, do you not see all things? Jesus is saying, Pay attention. Are you paying attention? That's what Jesus is saying. Do you not see all things? Like, there's, oh man, do you not see all things? In other words, Jesus is saying, like, there's signs and there's wonders. There's prophecies that are being fulfilled. How do you not see these signs? And he says, As surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. What's Jesus doing? My Bible says Jesus predicts the destruction of the temple. Destruction of the temple. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us, when will these things be? When is this temple going to be destroyed? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? Hmm. Then Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So it's, again, what is Jesus saying? It's, he's back to his first statement. Do you not see all these things? He's saying, pay attention, because you're going to see, you're going to be able to tell. 
So right here, he's Jesus is actually predicting the end times right here, because he's saying because they they know that Jesus is gonna come back again, the second coming. Everyone say second coming. So there is a second coming, coming. <laughs> It's Jesus, and he's saying a lot of people are going to come saying they're the Christ, and it's not them. They're going to deceive you, and you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. Church, pay attention, because this is Jesus talking to us right here. The disciples asked this question about the end times, and this applies to us. There's going to be wars and rumors of wars, he's like, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines pestilences and earthquakes in various places all these are the beginning of sorrows Oof. then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake and this is actually one of the one of the um one of what do you how do you say it This is one of the things that's being that that the Bible, Revelations, Isaiah, um, one of the things that they prophesy is that there will be pretty much like a one world government. Where this world's gonna get so bad that we're gonna cry we that the world is gonna have such a desire for peace that they'll do anything for that peace. And one of the ways that that peace is gonna happen is the Antichrist is gonna say, Hey, I can be the one to bring peace. And everyone can believe wherever they want. We're going to be one nation. One nation on this earth. One world government. One world government. And everyone's going to be at peace. The Antichrist is going to do this. And you know who... You know the one group of people that's going to speak out against it? Because they know the truth? The Christians. The Christians are going to be the one group that's going to say, No, don't take the mark of the beast. Don't, 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 don't take this this chip or whatever this is that they're going to put in your hand um, in order for you to buy and sell things. That this is this, 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 this new world government, this new world order that's going, to have, that's going to come on this earth, that's going to be established on this earth. And the only ones that are going to be speaking against it will be the Christians. That's what Jesus says. And you will be hated by all nations. Everyone's going to hate the Christians. Why? Because we know the truth in Jesus. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. You know what I think these false prophets will be in such especially the end times? These false prophets will say that there's peace. These pastors and preachers will say, Oh, you know, it's it's fine, you know, take that chip. It's okay. You know, God God wants you to feed your family. God wants us to live in peace. You know, we need to obey the government, you know, even if they're asking us to do things that are ungodly. These false prophets will deceive us into thinking that everything's okay. Even though, according to the Bible, we know everything is not okay. Does that make sense? So then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Ooh, he who endures to the end. That's me and you, amen? And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. So you're saying the gospel needs to be preached in all nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel in the prophet standing in the holy... Um, in the holy place whoever reads let him understand then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains let him who was on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house and let him who was in the field not go back to get his clothes but woe to those who are pregnant and those who are nursing babies in those days and pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the sabbath for then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, nor, no, nor shall ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved, but, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. That's us. <laughs> Man, there's so much here. 
Then if anyone says to you, look, here is a Christ, for there or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. Who's the elect? Me and you. Jesus is so good, or Matthew, really. It's so good at, at, um, at, at, at threading this needle. We just read a parable. I don't know if it was in 23 or 20. I think it might have been 22. Yeah, it was in 22. At the end of that parable, the great wedding, the great wedding feast that's going to happen in the, this, which is also the end times, you know, where the church is married to Christ and we're with him in heaven forever. That's in 22, right? At the end of that parable, what is what is the takeaway of that parable? Many are called, but few are chosen, right? Christ calls everyone to come to him. Christ calls everyone to be in his family. Christ calls everyone to salvation. But only those who accept it, only those who say yes, only those who change their life, who repent, and they, they are filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and, and they, they, they follow Christ, those are the ones that are chosen to be in the kingdom of God forever. Right? Those are also called the elect right here. So false Christ and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, um, even if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. What, for whoever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately, af immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. For they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory and he will send his angels with a great sound of trumpet and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other and we're gonna we'll, let's how about we just stop right there okay because there's so much happening okay so take your time with these signs and of the end of the age Yes, a lot of these are prophecies. Excuse me. A lot of these are prophecies of what will happen in the end times. But here's the point. We need to, we need to make sure that we are the ones that are, be, that are the elect. Because at the last couple of verses that we read there, God's going to sound a trumpet and, it's, and, and we're, and we're going to be the ones taken up to heaven. The elect. Now, why are all the nations and tribes mourning? Why are they? Because they missed it. They missed it. They chose to either take the mark of the beast or be part of the world government. Or, like many, they just chose to live their own lives. And they thought there was peace. They thought they were okay. They thought they were good. And they weren't. And then Christ is finally going to come. Like lightning, he's going to just appear and everyone's going to know, Oh my gosh, this is God. This is Jesus. And in that moment, they're going to know. <laughs> in that moment... Listen, that moment's going to come to everyone. Listen to me. That moment will come to everyone in those end times. That moment will come to everyone. And you will, in that moment, you will either rejoice or you, or you will mourn. You will either rejoice because you're in the family or you're going to mourn because you know, you know you weren't right. In that moment, you're going to realize, oh my gosh, I chose wrong. I decided wrong. I lived my own life. And now I'm going to pay for it for eternity. If the church would really grasp this truth of the end times, we would care less and less about man's opinion. If the church would grasp that Jesus is coming back and he's going to judge us on this earth for according to our works, according to our heart, were, was he our Lord, yes or no? That's the only question. Was he our Lord, yes or no? Because we're going to be able to see 
our actions will dictate was Jesus our Lord. Our actions will dictate that I love Jesus with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. That judgment coming to every single one of us. And listen to me, that is a wonderful truth. Listen to me, church. That is a wonderful truth. Because just like, just like me, I know you want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And so what does Jesus say during these prophecies? He who endures to the end shall be saved. And so let's pray that we are the ones, that we are the elect that endure to the end. Can we pray that? Father, in the name of Jesus, how glorious, how wonderful your second coming will be, God. And so help us as Christians to grasp this reality, grasp this as truth, that you are coming back for your church. So help us, Lord, to be that elect. Help us, Lord, to be the ones that, that, that will endure to the end. Give us the strength and the boldness, Lord Jesus, to endure to the end. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Wow, that was pretty sobering. That really was. And... Yeah, that was pretty sobering. So, but it's encouraging, guys. It's it, it's a good reality check because the more we grasp this reality of eternity of the end times, the less we're gonna care about our opinions. The less we're gonna care about our feelings. The less we're gonna care about what people think or do to us. Amen. Why? Because we have an eternity mindset. Amen. Before I let you go today, I want to remind you that people are our heart, generosity is our opportunity, excellence is our spirit, smiling is our favorite, and Jesus is our Lord. We are approaching the end of Matthew. We have, let's see, we have a few chapters left. Yep, Matthew 28 will be the last one, so... We'll be there very soon. So tomorrow we'll be in chapter 25. Let's see what's in chapter 25. The parable of the wise and foolish virgins. Oof. That's going to be a great parable. I'm excited to talk with, talk with you guys about that tomorrow. So enjoy your Thursday and we'll see you tomorrow.